Uh, I want to do this. This is uh, when I was a little kid. My uh, my father used to take me to the barber shop with him. And then when my son was small, I used to take my son to the barber shop. And even though it was like different cities and years apart, it was like the same barber. You know the black barber shops like on Saturday morning, right? Oh yeah. Okay. It's like we got little knots of hair rolling around on the floor. We have a picture on the wall. It's black light. It's velvet. Three people are in this picture. First one is Jesus. Martin. Second one is Malcolm. Malcolm. Third one is Jesus. <laughs> you need Jesus to watch over your father's shop. I don't know. Okay. And this one was written because the barber is always talking about everybody. There's always a big picture window, and whoever comes by outside, he's got some gossip about him. And sometimes he forgets you're there, he starts talking about you. <laughs> That's okay, I'll, I'll wait till later. Yeah. And then he's always talking about how much sex he's gonna have, even though you know he hasn't had any since the Eisenhower administration. But it's just like, he's gonna get it all the time. So anyway, really, uh, right? I, I don't know, all barbershops, but white people, any, the barbershops like that? No. Uh, man say, I don't know. In the South. How come all the white guys in here are balding? What's up with <laughs> Oh, okay, sorry, sorry. sorry. <laughs> all right, so this is, um, I don't know what the hell you got. That's all right. You, you guys are really good at this. So. <laughs> this is dedicated to a barber in Chicago by the name of Terrell. Am I getting too close to the mic? Because I forgot all about you telling me I had to stay. Okay. Um, uh, and it's interesting because the last time I did this in Chicago, somebody came up and told me that he had just died. So I was just thinking about, you know, barbers everywhere and all that stuff. So. Well, look who comes walking into my barber shop, still wearing that Jerry curl. You know, man, it's 2000, and everybody got no time for that grease trickling all down their neck, especially how as it is out there. Come here, let me put that stuff down. Let those naps grow out. You know, a couple of weeks, I'll hook you with a fade. The sisters don't like putting their hands in that greasy mess. And did y'all see that child Aretha on stage at the president's thing, trailing all that fur like she's Queen Elizabeth and all that fat underneath it? I ain't never seen no black woman with money stay fat. She can see how come when even the bones get scared. That child will eat a spaghetti strap. What's that song she sang? Ain't no way. Well, I guess it sure ain't. She got one chance, though. If you stay alive long enough, time will make you skinny. I just don't know if she got that much time. Oh, yeah. There go that gal I was telling y'all about. Got enough ass to bounce a drink on. I'm gonna be knee deep in that come Friday night of my name ain't Terrell Anderson Jr. And I ain't got my hand tussling in y'all nappy head. Man, she don't know you be yet, but she will. I bet she already heard about how my love making then put a few sisters on crutches. Hollis, whip some of this nature on them. Now they drooling, barking like dogs. Hell, y'all can laugh if y'all want. Thomas, you ask your sister. And you over there. Ask your mama. They say size don't matter, but it do if it's this size, man. I have to bind this to my leg. It will scare y'all out of here. Come next week, y'all, and that's that gal y'all just seen. She be passing by that window in the wheelchair. Mark my words. And Thomas, one too many times I'd seen your wife over there across the street in the butcher shop. And the meat she asking for ain't what makes it to your table for supper. She's over there all behind the counter like she's interested in the butcher's business. What she's interested in is the butcher's business. And you better start taking care of business at your own home, my man, before she get a taste of that sausage she's selling. Then you better be talking about, she gone, she gone. Man, I'm telling you, women are liberated nowadays. You can't be climbing up on top of them, poking like you got somewhere else to be in five minutes. And every time you get a chance, there you are from the Continental, sniffing all up Deborah Ann's young butt like she wants something from you beside that money you're always waving around. And let me tell you, anytime you see flies buzzing around a woman, and it ain't summer, it's time to move on to another woman. I don't know, man. You know, your wife got some nice legs on her. The butcher don't take up on her. I might get in line. <laughs> and, and wait, 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 wait. What's wrong with your boy? Damn near 40 years old, no woman in sight. Could be 
me, he's just ugly though. You know, the other night, I heard a blind woman turning him down. Said she could just imagine how ugly he was. Are you talking about some activator, man? You better activate your head under this razor and let me cut this stuff out of there. Let me see if you get this. It's 2000 now. Black man, freedom. Superfly done flew. I've been doing this 40 years. This is Terrell's Afrocentric Barbershop Fade Palace and Wild Style Emporium. Now put your ass in my chair and put your head in my hands.